Opening ke bedang? Opening ke bedang ya? Iya.
Gasol que um, So uh, we did model the ball and uh, we ended on the uh, we did this we ended on the, the equation part the equation part that's where we ended so yeah so we start from there for the equation part and uh, just a recap uh, we saw how. Boa discovered uh, how an atom is. He discovered that there was uh, this atom had some shell, had shells which are the energy which was quantified or which it was fixed, which was measured. Then we saw him bringing some phosphorus in such a way that this electron was just moving around a fixed orbital. And when it was moving around the fixed orbital, it means that it wasn't losing any energy. Yeah. Then Another postulate was that this uh, electron would only emit energy when it moves from one shell to another shell. That's when it could do. If, uh, for example, if it moves from the inner shell to the outer shell, it absorbs energy and the, there is absorption. Then emission was from when it moves from the outer shell to the inner shell, that, that's when it emitted energy. So looked at all that. Then, Yeah, then we had the question. Someone asked me a question like, uh, does atoms which are stable, do they do absorption and emission? And I said that we should research on that. And after, I don't know if you researched on that. Yeah, but, but after my research, I found out that definitely, uh, even stable atoms, they can what? They can absorb and emit, and they can do absorption and emission. So uh, for them, for the stable, so the emission and the absorption, uh, why they say that they can emit and absorb, such, uh, they said that because one, they say that when, 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 when an atom is stable, let's say argon or neon, it has a stable, like it has a full electrons, it is stable. So what happens is when atom is stable, when it absorbs this energy, this atom goes to the other shell, which means that the shell which is inside here, it will be it will remain what vacuous, like there will be space, a free space here, like it will remain vacuous. Instead, instead of having, for example, if this one has two electrons, uh, 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 yeah, if it has two electrons. If it loses one electron, if one electron is uh, is excited and moves to the outer shell, it means this shell inside here will have one electron, meaning there is a what? There is a vacuous, like there is, it's not really stable. So what happens is when it moves to the outer shell, for atom, for all atoms, even stable ones, when it moves to the outer shell, it will spend, uh, it, will, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will move around this outer shell for just a short period, then it will return back to its position. So meaning, first it needs to absorb energy to move out. When it moves out, then it needs to release this energy in form of light to come in. That's why you see that yeah, they use argon and neon gas, inert gases, they are used like our bulbs, they use inert gases, they, like they use this, this theory, this method of emission and absorption for them to produce light in such a way that when you, when, when you direct an electric charge into this neon gas, what happens is the neon gas, it will get that energy, which is coming from electricity, and it will be excited and it will move to the outer shell. Then when it is coming back to its original shell, it will release some light. This is the light which you see in most of our, if, yeah, if you, if, if you take time to research more, you see that the light which we have in our homes, everywhere, we see that there is argon gas or neon gas, and the, the, that's the, the method of what producing light. So uh, the person who asks that, do stable atoms, uh, 
the stable atoms uh, uh, undergo absorption and emission. Yeah, they undergo absorption and em emission. I don't know if it's clear. I don't know if I will explain that one. It's clear. It's clear. And the person who asked the question, uh, is he there or? Yes, I'm here. It's clear. It's clear. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, so continue. So, we looked, uh, yeah, we looked at absorption and emission. When an electron absorbs, when an electron absorbs energy, it moves to the outer shell. When it emits energy, it moves to the inner shell. So we continued, and we said that the energy, this energy, of the energy which the an electron acquires to move to the outer shell, it can be written as Em minus En, which is equal to Hv. Hv. This is the photon what energy where H is the Planck's constant, which is six point. 626 six times 10 to the power negative 34. Then V is what the frequency. Frequency, which is the most of the times they can tell you to calculate the frequency, is not a fixed, fixed, fixed variable. You have to calculate it. Yeah. Then you know that the formula for frequency is equal to speed of light over longer don't. So there are sometimes they can give you longer don't, then they tell you to. Calculate frequency. After after this topic, I I made some examples for you guys. So we'll do some examples with you guys. So that I wanted to give you questions now. I said no. I'll give you questions after this example. You have an idea of how to go about these things, and that's when I'll give you questions. So after there, we we also looked at quantification. Yeah. Uh, we looked at the uh, quantification du moment de la quantité, which simply means this This is the formula which Bohr derived. Yeah, this is the formula which Bohr derived, which uh, showed that uh, when an electron is moving around uh, a stationary orbit, doesn't lose any energy at all. This is MV is just the movement of an electron. R is the radius. Then NH is it? uh the frequency like the energy which uh the energy and the frequency which it has to move to another shell yeah then two pi two pi is simply when when you multiply when you uh when you when you when you do cross multiplication you find it is two pi r which is just simply showing us a circle this is the formula of a circle if you remember if calculating circumference yeah it's just showing us the circle then this is movement then this is the, the ability of it to move from one, uh, the frequency for it to move from one shell to, uh, to the other. So that's all which we talked about. So we see that Bohr, uh, he formulated or he discovered another formula, which he added to the already formed formulas of Rutherford. So when he added these formulas together, yeah, when he added these formulas together, we found him uh, coming up with the NH total of negative m, which is the mass of the electron, times e to the power of four, the charge of the electron over eight epsilon two h two times one over n two, where the whole thing, uh, the from uh, from negative m e four over eight epsilon two h two, the whole thing from h two going this side, it represented as a, uh, energy, energy at the first state, and this energy is always fixed, which is negative 13.6. So the whole thing here to represent that thing, negative 13.6. So you see in your questions, which will give you, there's no need of you using this whole thing, you just use this formula that yeah, depend with it, how you want to calculate the energy. So that's the formula then. See the uh, see the niveau N and M. If there, if, if this electron moves from one level to another level, this is the formula which we usually use. Yeah, because N is just the the shell, the number shell or the number of shell. If I say it moves from N1 to N2, meaning N is equal to one, then where it is move move this what two. So it will be one, uh, it will be two squared. Two squared minus one over uh, one squared. 
then you find your answer. Yeah. You can, yeah, it can be one, well, one squared minus one over two squared. Then after doing your calculations, you'll find the, your answer. So we'll see all that when we do some questions. I'll prepare some questions for you guys. And after that, we also went to how can you calculate the Royal mode, the atom, the bore? So most of the time they specify, calculate the Royal mode, the atom, the bore. This is the formula which they use. RN, RN is equal to square epsilon H2 over by M E squared times N2, where this from E squared, this, the whole thing is just AO. And AO is, it, it was already calculated for you guys, so you just have to, uh, for like this one, like you just have to memorize this one to master this one, so to be 0 0.529. This is the a. so rn is 0 0.529 0 .5 times n squared. Yeah, so this is the formula. So the formula you have to know this is the formula for energy. If they give you your n, they say find the energy in that n, you can find it simply using by using this formula. And uh, then if they give you that it moves from one, one, one shell to another shell, you have to you can use this formula to calculate energy. Then if they ask you what is the radius or the volume mode, the atom, the ball, then use this formula to calculate. So these are the formulas which are mostly used uh, in calculations in, in chemistry. This, so, this formula uh, is just have... What yes. do we use the last one for again? The last one is... Uh, the last one is used when you are calculating the radius. The radius of a uh, electron to the nucleus. Like most of the time they tell you calculate the Ryan mode, the atom, the ball. Then you know that you have to use this formula to calculate its radius. I hope it's clear. It's clear. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so A0, a tapere Ryan mode, the light on the bore, then yeah. Then now, the model of the bore montre the energy, the atom, the hydrogen, the concave, the values being defined. So the model, so we see that the model of bore shows that the energy of the atom of hydrogen can only take some values which are well defined. We see that it can only take the values being defined, the values which are well defined. What do I mean? Uh, I mean that if it is if it is E1, E1, it will be negative 13.6. E1, the E1 meaning when I say energy level. Most of the times, like when they ask question, they say the energy level, calculate the energy level, calculate the what the energy level simply means uh, calculate your n. Like then, uh, where do you find this shell? Is it n is equal to one, n is equal to two, n is equal to so the energy the level e one e one where n is equal to one. When I say e one, meaning is the first shell n is equal to one. So a, when n is equal to one you have your energy negative 13.6. When E2, when A is equal to 2, you have negative 3.40. If, 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 if you want, you can try it by using this formula where, where you, you'll be just changing your N. If N is equal to 1, you just replace by 1, then you find your answer. You find it is 13, negative 13.6. If N is equal to 2, you find that your answer is uh 3.4 if n is equal to uh three you find that your answer by using that formula you find your answer those answers which are you found are always fixed answers so now how do you present this uh uh this uh this division of energy or these different shells using in graphic form or using what using diagram of rays they say uh, yeah schema the ray diagram of rays how do you use it in diagram of rays so here i want you to know that these are different shells this is n1 this line here represents the first shell yeah we just uh, we wrote it from the i can say from the front view yeah 
So this this first line it is n one, which is uh, <clears throat> n n is equal to one, which is the first shell. Then this second line is n is equal to two, which is the second shell. Then this third line is n is equal to three, which is the 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 what the uh, the 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 third the third shell. Then the fourth one is n is equal to four, which is the fourth shell. Then you go on the fifth shell, then until infinity, n is equal to infinity, meaning an infinity. Yeah, an infinity. So what's the significance of this diagram? So this diagram is very really important in such a way that there will be some questions where they will be uh, asking you to present the rays in a diagram form. So here, what happens is, according to, that, to the diagram, we have said that energy is always fixed in this shell. So what happens is, assume an electron is here. So what happens is, when an electron is here, and I try to add some energy to this electron, this electron will be what excited. And when this electron is excited, according to the energy which I've added to it, it will move to n is equal to infinity. So when it moves to n is equal to infinity, he is excited. Then after some time, it will come back to its way, to its energy level. So when an electron moves to another shell, when it is coming back, it's supposed to come to its energy level. It's, it never passes this energy level. So it always needs to come to its original energy level, which means that the energy of this electron is always fixed. Then if I excite it according to the energy which I give it, maybe it goes to n is equal to five. When it goes here, it will come back again to its what energy level, which is n is equal to one. Then this is the same thing also, according to the energy which I'll give it, it will go and come back to its original state. Then here also it will go. When I excite it, it will come back by emitting uh, some uh, photons to its uh, original state. The same thing here, it happens, the same thing, it goes and it comes back. Yeah, so that's... Uh, Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, there was some problem. Mm. Yeah, sorry for that. There was some problem. So, yeah, as I said, as I said, when, like, the way I said, it will be excited according to the energy it goes up, it comes back to its original state. It will continue like that, it will continue like that according to the energy. So this is for n is equal to what? To one. Then if it is n is equal to two, when it is n is equal to two, meaning if I excite an electron which is found in the second shell, I will excite it, it will go maybe to n is equal to infinity according to the energy which I will give you. But when it comes back, it can never bypass n is equal to two, it will always come back to its original shell. So its original shell, which means that the energy is always fixed on this electron. When I excite it, it's supposed to give to, it's not supposed to come to n is equal to one, no. It's always supposed to come to n is equal to two. So the same procedure also, the same, the same. Then for n is equal to three, if I'm starting on the third shell, I excite the electron in the third shell, it goes and it will come back on the third shell to never go to n is equal to two. Never. That's what you should always put in mind. So energy is always fixed. The electron never goes anywhere or never goes beyond where it is coming from when it is excited, when, when it absorbs some energy. It never goes beyond where it is coming from. The same we see, the fourth shell, the same we see, the fifth shell. So now I want you to know that uh, I think you have observed why we have represented energy in negative. There is negative 13.6, then N2, there is negative 3.4, there is negative 1.5, there is negative 0 
and see, we go up. So you observe here that if a number is negative and if this number is reducing, uh, we see that negative 13.6 is less than negative 13.4. I think you did like in, you know, you know, in mathematics, the lesser number, the lesser negative number is always bigger than the, uh, the negative number, which is bigger. So you see that this one is negative 3.4 because it is going towards to the what? To the positive. So the more you go towards to the positive, the more the energy increases. That's why I say the first shell has less energy than the second shell. Then the second shell has less energy than the third shell. The third shell has less energy than the fourth shell. So we'll be going like, like that. That's how it is. That's how we should do. Not until infinity. If you need energy at infinity is always equal to zero. Should always put that in mind. Energy at infinity is always equal to what? To zero. That's what you should always put in mind. So these uh this what this 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 right these lines here, you see the line here, the line, the these lines represent the rays, yeah. The rays, the rays, the different rays in the first shell. These are the rays which you can found find uh in the second shell these are the rays which you can found, find in the third shell as and you go on so this what these uh uh these rays are divided in different series so the rays which you found in n1 we say that they are in series the lyman so they're divided like you just uh, when they found these rays, they divided them in different what, series. So the first series is called the Lyman. Then the second series, the second series is called the series the Bauman. So when I say the electron was found in the series the Lyman, then you should know that n is equal to one. They will never tell you that n is equal to one in questions. They never tell you. They will just say it was excited from the series of Lyman. Then I know that. I'm talking about n is equal to one. And there's also zero of Bauma, which is n is equal to what? Two. Then I know that my n is equal to two. Then there's zero of patient, uh, zero of passion. Passion, I know that my n is equal to three. Then zero uh, of, of bracket. Then I know my n is equal to four. Then you go on. This is zero of fund, P F U N D. Yeah. And you go on, you go on. So, but these are the series which most like uh, this is where we are limited yeah mostly mostly they end on siri the fund a p f u n d yeah that's where they end so they will tell you that this electron was excited from siri the lyman you have to know where c the lyman is so see the lyman is always presented in n is equal to one siri the bauma is always represented in n is equal to two and partial n is equal to three bracket n is equal to four, then yeah, you go on fun, which is n is equal to five. So that's how uh, they are all always represented. So you found that this series had the, uh, this this race had the, a, def, a definite uh, energy in such a way that if I excite it, it comes back. So here, what you should just put in mind, if I excite it, it should come back to its original shell. That's what you should put in mind. Then energy increases as you move away from the nucleus. This is uh, for a simple reason. You know that when an electron is near to the nucleus, it's more stable. The attraction force is high and doesn't need a lot of energy. But when it is out, uh, uh, the, uh, when it is uh, outside the shell, the one the attraction reduces. If 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 the electron is is in the, for example, N one. Then the outer shell N2, the, the what the attraction force reduces. Yeah, this electron, like it's not more stable than the electron on the first shell. So we see that the energy is like it's excited, it's always uh, trying to move. Yeah, so we see that this electron has more energy than the electron which is stable, which is near the nucleus, which is yeah, which is closest to the nucleus. That's why I see. Energy is presented the negative here, meaning as you go up, the energy reduces. So that's what you should know. Then you should also know this. When I say 
uh, eta on the metal. I mean n is equal to one. Sometimes they say the electron moves from eta fundamental to this, this, this by emission. So you have to know that n fun, uh, eta fundamental is equal to always n is equal to one. So this you see the significance of these things when we do some questions. I'll prepare some questions for you guys so that we just look at some questions. Yeah, so this, I have a question. Yeah, you can ask me. Okay, let's take for instance in n in n equals one mm -hmm. in theory the the lima mm -hmm. we have um, electrons let's suppose the, they have the energy of five joules yeah then you go to theory the bauma mm -hmm. you have electrons which have the energy of 10 joules mm -hmm. so you are saying that the energy is fixed so the yeah. when the electrons move from siri the lineman goes to the seal the bauma mm -hmm. which energy are they are, are they going to possess is it the energy which are from siri the lineman or they are going to get new energy. Oh, yeah, that's really a nice question. So what happens is when, when like an electron, assume an electron is here, the energy in this shell, I said the energy in this shell is always fixed. So what happens is, no, I'll get uh, for the second one, the electron is here and the energy in this shell is all fixed. So what happens is if the energy in this shell is five, then the energy in N5, you see, let's say is 20 joules. So what happens if an electron is here, there's some energy which comes, a photon energy, and it absorbs this energy. The photon energy which comes must be 15 joules in such a way that when it absorbs 15 joules, that's the five joules which it has here to have 20 joules, which will make it to jump to N5 where there is 20 joules. So it will jump into the energy which it possesses. So if it possesses energy, if you say here is 15, here is, you say N4 is 15, meaning if it is 5, it will, it will, if the photon energy is 10 joules, it will absorb that 10 joules, then it will go where there is what? 15. So the movement of an electron depends with it, the energy which it what? absorbs. So when it absorbs, so when it goes at N4 or N5, it will have the energy of that shell. But that energy of that shell will not last for long because it was just given for by it for a short period. And when that energy is released, when that energy is emitted, that's why you see that the electron coming back to its original position where it has five joules, the energy is original energy. I don't know if it's clear. Yes, clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so we'll continue. So, we've talked about it. So, you should know series the Bauma, series the Lehman, uh, series, series the Partial, series the Pocket, and series the Fund. But the, the most like series the Bauma, series the Lehman, yeah, these two, they are the ones which they like asking mostly questions on. So, uh, this uh, this is simply the representation uh, re representation graphic the en so this is how we present it you see you see how questions come about this 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 same diagram how you, how you can answer the questions yeah i'll show you the questions then the raise the c spectra c class a on series situé dans divers domaines de longo donde so we see that uh, these uh, spectra or this series or these rays are always put or uh, are always arranged in diverse domains of according to the longer don't which it has. So according to the longer don't, if they say calculate the longer don't simply means the wavelength. If they say calculate the wavelength of this, 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 uh, uh, the calculate the wavelength, for example, they say, uh, where is the formula for wavelength? Yeah, 
Yeah, so what we've learned is this 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 casting is always to present what we've learned. Don't go don't. Yeah, should always not. So sometimes they if you find the wavelength, so you find the wavelength, the longer don't after find the longer don't <coughs> you have this table. Huh? This is table for verification, like the table for you to verify. Yeah, the table they use it for verifying after you find your logo don't of how an electron maybe if an electron moved it from N1 to N2, like it moved from N1 to N2, the wavelength, how it moved from N1 to N2, you found this. It's maybe 0 0.6, maybe 0 0.6. Then you see, this is your diagram of what reference. It is from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8, and 0 0.6 is in between 0 0.4 and 0 0.8. So you know that one, your series Bauma, then your domain is visible light. So you know, the UV, it means uh, ultraviolet, yeah. Then this is visible then inf infrared rays. So this, you know, ultra, ultra view, view, view it, visible uh, infrared, uh, yeah, infrared rays, X-rays, you continue. So you see, so according to your calculations, according to the longer don't or the wavelength which you find, it will tell you which domain. So there's a series, they can tell you what is series, series, when they talk about series, they say series, they mean the series of ba Lyman, Bauma, Passion, Bracket, all that. But when they talk of domains, they mean, is it in ultraviolet, UV, or is it invisible, or is it in domain of infrared uh, rays? So you have to know all those things, yeah. Yeah, so those things, that's, that's all about all so those things. So this, Instagram simply is for just verification and you verify and after find your longer your longer dot when they ask you in which domain. Yeah, so they can ask you Siri, domain, all that they ask those questions. So you should always note that N must be greater than one, which implies that N is equal to one, Lyman, which is the thing which I was explaining that when I excite an electron here, this electron must always go uh, at the position where n must be greater than one. It can go at n is equal to two. Yeah, it can go at n is equal to two. It can go at n is equal to three. It can go at n is equal to four. It can go at n is equal to five. It can go at n is equal to infinity. Yeah, that's where I should go. n should always be greater than one if I excite it. Then when it comes to its original energy, it should always give you n is equal to what? To one. It's always coming to what? To the this original position. That's what this this thing is explaining here. So don't uh, get confused. Any is greater than two. Meaning, if I excite it from the Bauma state, it must go to uh, to a value where n is equal to two. It cannot go to n is equal to one. Two it's go to n is equal to three, four, five, or infinity. Then when it comes back, it cannot also go beyond n is equal to two. It will always go come back to its original position. That's all. So passion also the same. Uh, can only go from n is equal to three going up, then going or coming back after it is uses energy on its original position. Then n is equal to four, the same also. Yeah. So we'll continue. So this uh, this diagram simply just telling us uh, the movement of an electron. This is the same thing which are uh, from explaining. When EM, EN, I'm, uh, I want you to get clear. This is energy de niveau. When they say energy de niveau, they just say, they, they just mean you, the, where, uh, at which shell does this electron, is, is, at which shell is this electron? Is it N1 or N2 or N3? That's what they basically mean. So EM, EN. So it can move from EN, it goes to EM, then when it absorbs, then when it is emitting, it comes back to what the origin, which I was explaining. So there are many ways of finding what longer don't. So this is the the, the second relation. I'm just going to yeah. The, this is the one way of if they tell you find the longer don't. This is the one way of finding the wavelength. So what can you do if they tell you to find the wavelength? So first we know that our energy. 
our energy at this shell is always negative m e to the power 4 over 8 epsilon squared h2 uh, divided uh, times 1 over n2. And we say that this one, this whole thing here, it just represents what? Negative 13.6. So don't, don't get confused, just say negative 13.6. Donne, yeah, donne la progression de reads. So we, we see that reads formed this relation. So how did you form this relation? So first you knew that energy, the change of energy, energy of photon, we know that uh, the change of energy most of the times, we know that the change of energy, the energy of photon is equal to HV. Uh, you know, I think you know where this relation, uh, relation is coming from. We have, uh, let me just uh, remind you a bit. Yeah, we have our energy is equal to <clears throat> HV. This is the, our energy of the photon, which is HV. And this energy of the photon, which is HV, we know that the V is frequency, which is equal to speed of light over longer dome. So where there's V here, we just replace it by C over longer don't, and you will find that our equation will be a HC over longer don't. That's that our equation. So this is the energy, this is the change of energy when it absorbs. So when it comes, when it moves from one 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 electron to another, it can change in energy. Inside in, in this form, this is the first form in which you can change the energy, a photon which is absorbed, or it can change in energy in this form. So these are the equation which, depending with the question which they have given you, you can these are equations, these are the methods which you can use. So it can change in energy using this form. So you try to you try to use this equation here and this, uh, and what and this equation here, which are similar, I tried to put them together to combine them so that it will be easy for him to find what longer don't. But if you want, if you want, what you can do just is to find the energy using this uh, this equation. You find the energy first using this equation. After we have found your energy using this equation, since you know that this equation is uh, is equal to this equation, you just equate it where there's energy. So the energy which you found there is just the same with the energy here. So where there's energy, you just replace it by the energy which you find here, you find there. Then after that, you just make it longer than the subject of the formula. Then you know that H and C are constant, then you calculate your energy. So you can calculate it in such a way that you first you calculate the energy using that formula. You come to the formula which is equivalent to it, you calculate this longer than this wavelength. That's how you can calculate wavelength the other way. Or you can go a direct way in such a way that you combine these two equations. Here, that's why here I'm talking about the combination of these what two equations. So I'll get this is my first equation, and this is E n, uh, the shell, the uh, any shell it has its own equation, and the M shell it has also it has the equation. You have seen the equation are just similar, they're just the same equations. Yeah, that's why you see that. Yeah? When I combine this equation EM minus EN, it will give me this whole equation. Since this one and this one are similar, it will give me this whole equation. One over e, uh, N squared, N squared, this one. Then it, what changes on is what? It's the level of the shell. If it is N1, it goes to N2. So you see N squared minus one over M squared. Where, yeah, yeah, so, where all this we know that is negative 13.6 all this. Yeah, so this is this is where actually the, the, the equation comes from. That is the top equation which we looked at, then it is equal to HC over longer than, which means we can we, we know that you can also use this equation to, to calculate the, the energy which takes took place when the electron moves from one electron from one shell to another shell. So when you combine these uh these formulas, we see that uh we we'll multiply longer don't. Uh, we will we'll multiply H, H, HC. We we'll multiply HC by the down part here. Since it's division ME4 divided by the down part here. When you multiply, you will see that there's H. There's uh, there's uh, 
for the h at kudaku there is h here so when we multiply h times h it will give us h3 then c you can multiply it down here to just be c this is the whole equation this here so this whole thing here is just represented as rh no need of mastering this whole thing it's just represented for you just only need to know this this last equation here which is rh so the rh you find that you know if 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 i multiply if if i do cross multiplication i'll just remain with it. one over uh longer don't is equal to this whole equation one over m squared minus one over m squared whereas one over longer don't is equal to this whole thing here is rh this is uh, called the uh, rise big constant they are constant the right big constant the right big which this value also is constant, it's always given 1.0967 times 10 to the power 7. So this value, you have to know it by heart if you want to use this formula to calculate it directly the energy. But uh, for me, I would advise you this one, this formula is a bit complicated, like it's really complicated when you are using it. The best formula which I usually use for me is first I calculate, I, I will first use, if they tell me find the longer don't, I'll first use this formula to calculate my energy. Then when I calculate my energy, I'll come to this formula where I'll just replace where there's energy with the energy which I've calculated. Then just make it longer than the subject of formula, which will be AC over the energy. Then I know H is constant, C is constant. Then I find my longer than easier way. Rather than if I use that formula, or like I'll spend some, a lot of time and you know time is money. So you have to move fast. Yeah, so. Excuse me, um, what does mm -hmm. the H in our equation mean? The H? R H? Mm -hmm. H, oh. the H. Oh. So, R, uh, like, like R H, this is something which is together. They are together. It just means constant there, right back, which is this R H, which is this value. I don't know if you can get me clear. I don't know yeah, if it's not, okay. Not or this or... equation. The other yeah. one, the one you yeah. Uh, oh, it, oh, yeah. Mm. This one means Planck's constant. It's always constant, also, and it's always given for you guys. Yeah, this means constant the Planck, which is 6.626 times 10 to the power negative 34. So this one is always given to you. So that's why I'm, I, 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 I prefer this formula. Like you go with this formula if you are taught to find the longer do you go with this formula because you know your H is constant, you know your C is constant, and you have found your energy already. So you can find the logo dot in a easy way. I don't know if it's clear. It's clear. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, so, yeah. So, so that's all that about the, <coughs> about the calculations and we'll do some questions. Uh, yeah, we'll do some questions. So. You should always note that eh? the energy, the, ex, uh, the energy, the extra, uh, excitation de la atom, the hydrogen, eh? the energy necessary to make pass the electron to orbital n1 to an orbital n2. So this simply means that eh? the the energy which is used to excite an electron, this is the energy which is uh, which this is the energy which will be used to the uh, the exciting energy or the, uh, the energy which excites an electron, this will be the energy which will be used to move from N1 to N2. When it is excited, it will move from N1 to N2, N1 to N3, N1 to N4, N1 to N5 to N1 to N infinity. So this simply means you can move from N1 to N2, you can move to N1 to M3, N1 to M4 until infinity, or you can move to N2, N3, N2, N4, the, the same thing which I explained until to infinity. Then there's also another definition for there's also energy of ionization. For energy, uh, uh, the energy day, uh, the, the ionization de la atom, the hydrogen, and the energy necessary to faire passer the health from the orbital n is equal to one, a n is equal to infinity. Ce phénomène correspond à arrachement de l'électron de l'atom. So, when I say energy ionization, meaning it's always, there's no, when I say 
an electron was ionized, the, I mean that if it is N1, it goes from N1 to infinity always. There's no exception. There's, it's just N1 to infinity. Or if I say it was, it was ionized from N2, meaning it, go, it moved from N2 to infinity. If I say it was ionized in N3, the third shell, it moves from the third shell to infinity. So for this one, it's always when you ionize, it is like you are you are making something an ion and you, you are losing an electron. Yeah, you are losing an electron and it's always, it always goes to the word infinite, which is different from when I'm exciting an electron. When I'm exciting an electron, it can either move to N1 to N2 or N1 to N3 or N1 to N infinite. So for exciting, is a condition which is different, yeah. I hope it's clear until there. Yeah. So uh, now we're going to go to application to car the hydrogen white. So there was a question, one of you guys asked me a question. Uh, does this formula only apply for hydrogen or, or atoms which have one, one what, one electron? I said, Yes, it only applies to atoms which are one electron and that would be always the answer. But now we're going to look at how can you calculate energy? How can you like use the same formula which is always applied to when 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 now when when you only have one electron? How can you use that formula to other uh, to other atoms like when calculating when you want to calculate using other atoms so you can only calculate using other atoms so by definition we will define hydrogenide so and uh, hydrogenide a hydrogenide a is an edifice monatomic qui a un seul electron and z is superior a uh -uh. Z is, is, is greater than one. So we say an hydrogenoid, this is uh, an edifice. An edifice is this is simply means a beauty monatomic. Monatomic uh, simply means when monatomic is, this is when an, elect, when an atom loses what? When an uh, atom loses some electrons, it becomes monatomic, which has, uh, this, 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 this atom must have one, electron in a is automatic shell. So in a simpler definition, this is an atom with only one electron in its shell. And this atom must have the proton number of the proton number which is greater to one. So for me to to say to for me to qualify an atom to be a hydrogenoid, one it must have one electron in its shell. Get it not in its outermost shell, but I mean initial meaning all these electrons must lose all these electrons. If it has five electrons, it must lose four electrons and it must have one electron remaining. So how do you do this? How do you make a, a an atom a hydrogenoid? So you can make an atom hydrogenoid, for example, helium. Helium has got two uh, two electrons. So for me to make it a hydrogenoid. It will lose what? One electron, meaning it will remain with what? One electron in its shell. Then I can, I can qualify it to be hydrogenite. Lithium, lithium has three electrons. For, it, for me to make it a hydrogenite, it has to lose what? Two electrons. Then I'll qualify it to be what? Hydrogenite. Then barium has four electrons. For me to qualify it to be uh, hydrogenite, it has to lose what? Three electrons then it is qualified now to be what the hydrogen is. So you see that in each atom, we're only remaining with what? One, one, one electron. So for you to qualify something to be hydrogenite, you have to have, you have to remain with what? <coughs> with one electron. So most of the times, uh, that's, that's why I said, when you say, when you ask me a question, do you always calculate it using uh, with the atoms, which has only one electron initial? I said yes, because an atom, whether it is uh, atom with uh, uh, many shells, it will always lose these shells, almost all its shells, it only remains with what? One shell. 
So how do you calculate, uh, if they say, calculate the energy of this hydrogen line? How do you calculate the energy of this hydrogen? It's not something which is difficult. Eh? So what you do uh, simply, see, you know that Z and the number of the protons, you know that Z represents the number of the protons. So Z here is two, Z here is three, Z here is four, the hydrogen line. On pay, prendre, the calculate the model of the bore on, represent la charge E, the noyon passé the hydrogen line. So we see that we place the charge, the charge, the charge, the charge, the charge, we place the charge. We say that if we want to calculate for hydrogen, right? We place where there's a charge here, here, there's a charge. A charge is just the same as, you know, what, uh, um, what defines a charge of an atom is its number of protons. So when I say a charge, just the same, I mean the number of protons of that thing. So I replace the charge by Z, I replace that charge of, uh, hydrogen. Since this, uh, I want you to note this, the equations here we are using the equations, the equations for hydrogen, and we know that hydrogen is a proton number or its charge is always one. Yeah, its proton number is one. So if I square one squared, it always gives me what? One. So here, they just wanted, since Z will be varying, Z can be uh, for this one, Z is what? Two. So it will be two to the square, two, 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 uh, two to square two. It will, it will give us what? It will give us uh, four over N squared. Yeah, N squared is just a number of shells. You know this already. So this is, so they were just, they were, the, the same equation which you have, they were just putting the, the number, the protons. If you just know the number of the protons, just square them, yeah. So this is the first one. If you want to calculate the energy for hydrogen, right? This is the, if you want to calculate the viral mode, there are the atom, the bore, you just divide by Z. This one, not, this one is not, you should note that this one is not uh, squared, it's not Z squared, just the way it is. Then if you want to calculate for uh, using right, right, uh, constant the right back, you just, you just, you also replace by Z squared. Then there is that one, the formula also. So it will be always what? Be always replacing by what? Z squared. Yeah, so you, if, we, if it's hydrogen weight, the formula is just the same, but where there's one, they replace by what? Z squared. So where there's one, they were replacing by what? Z squared. That's how you should, where there's one, they replace Z squared. Then for Ryan Moore, it's a different case. You just uh, divide by Z, then uh, constant the right break, where there's one, they just replace it by Z squared. If, if, if you move the brackets here, it will be Z squared, Z squared here. So that's how you calculate for a hydrogen line. So uh, Boa uh, gave us how to calculate using if, if it is a hydrogen line, if it loses almost all its uh, Electrons and remains with one electron, and it also he also told us to it also he also uh, he also told us how to calculate if an electron moves from one shell to another shell. So this was according to Bohr. So these are the equation which you get familiar with if you do a lot of questions. Yeah, I will send a lot of questions, and if you do a lot of questions, you you come you become familiar with these equations. So. So in conclusion, we see that in conclusion, the theory of the Bohr interpreted remarkably, remarkablement the spectra the principal way the emission de la atom de hydrogen. And c'est révélé incapable. So we see that this theory of the Bohr, it was able to interpret very well the what? The principle of the emission, the quantification, the, uh, quantification, uh, uh, the what, the energies, how energy are fixed. It was able to explain all, all these, uh, the, the series, the, the series of Bauma, the what, but it was incapable, may say, very incapable then. You see what it was incapable of doing, like, it was able to calculate all this, but it was, uh, it wasn't able, there was something which, uh, 
Bauma had a problem with. Yeah, so I saw something like a question, but uh, I'm trying to open it. Is, is, uh, there is no question. So yeah, so we see that uh, the theory, the boar, it was able to interpret very well the the what the the division, the quantification of energy, the shells is the one is the one who brought in the shells. But there was something which he could not really or he was incapable of interpret uh, interpreting. These are the things which he was incapable. So was incapable of interpreting that atoms, the atom, there's atom possess their plus their electrons. So he was incapable to interpret that atoms actually has a lot of what electrons. That's why you see him bringing the concept of the calculating using hydrogen, right? But he didn't know that each shell, for example, if the first shell must occupy, you know, those like according to electron configuration, if something to be stable, the first shell must occupy two electrons, the third shell must occupy eight electrons, then you go on 18, you go on like that. So for him, he couldn't, he couldn't really explain that, how the electrons should be, how, like, what the, the first shell, how the number of electrons should occupy, the second shell, the, the number of electrons should occupy, it, he never really know how to interpret it. That's why you see him using no, uh, you can calculate using. You can use the case of hydrogen right? You can. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, he used the hydrogen atom, which has one electron. So he was incapable of saying that, or of showing, of showing that electron actually possess uh, an atom actually possess the plus their electrons. That's the thing which he, that's the problem which he had, and the second problem which he had was he was unable to justify experimental, uh, experimentally more the existence, the difference of the and cell vient du fait que Boa avo appliqué à son modèle le loi de mécanique classique. So we see that Boa, he had, he just, he just used postulate when I told, when we started, we said, he used postulate, he used assumption, he used assuming, he was just assuming. So, he could not uh, read, he could not show experimental that there existed different orbitals or there existed what different what shell. He couldn't show an experiment to show there's the shell N1, shell N2, shell N3. He was incapable of doing that. And this was because he used uh, mechanic classic, which is just described the movement of an object, yeah, mechanic classic, and we see that these two things which Boa failed to do will be done by Brogio and Strodiger. So Strodiger and Brogio will be able to do these things and will be able to tell us actually that uh, atom possess plus yeah, electrons and they will be able to tell us that experimental about the shells. If there are the shells or if there are no shells, we are going to see uh, when you study when you start this chapter so yeah so uh i don't know if it's clear uh until there i want us to do an example yeah i'll just do it first first so that you guys have an idea of uh the calculations and yeah and i want you just to pay attention since uh, my plan today was uh, to start the the second part the second part yeah nature onto the tour since i see that there's no time I don't know if it's okay we do a question or I should start the uh, you do an example or I should start with the second part due to time. Uh, we can do the examples. We can do the examples. Uh, Lillian Msonda, you have raised your hand. No, it was a mistake. Okay. So there are some examples which are which we will do. Yeah. 
Can you see? Can you see my sharing? Yes, yes. Okay, so we're going to do one question. So this is the question like, we should, when I, I'll be just explaining the steps and I'll be a bit fast if I'm very fast, if you, are, if, if you didn't get, you can just you stop me, then you tell me, how do you do there, there, so I'll tell and I'll explain it to you. So the first, the question starts, uh, I starts, La Longo Don't, June, the red, la serie de bauma, n is equal to two for the atom the hydrogen a the uh four eight six point one nanometer. So, so here we say this is just yeah, yeah. Where, where are you yeah where I'm reading yeah okay here we're starting here you are seeing now no yeah we can, I can see part. No, we can't see. You can't see anything. What we are seeing is set to the MSC of Figara. Something like that. What you are saying? What we are seeing, there is B electron uh, and associate something. That's what we are seeing. Oh, but I shared. They are just notes. They are just names. They are just what names. Which what we are means by that is that uh, uh, exactly yes. Now we are able to see. You are now you are able to see now. Yes. You can see everything now. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So the first question, he says, uh, even though it's not that clear, uh, since uh, I wrote the question, then I tried taking some pictures. So yeah, it's not that clear. So he said the first question says, La longo don't during the re de la serie de bauma n is equal to two for the atom the hydrogen eh, the four hundred. Uh, uh, 486.1 nanometer. So it's uh, here it simply means the wavelength of one of the rays of the series of Bauma. Here they have even given, given us that this series of Bauma it comes from n is equal to two, four, four atom of hydrogen is 486.1 nanometer. So they have given us the longer don't or they have given us, yeah, they have given us the wavelength already. So now the first question is. Calculate the frequency there, radiation keep produce set ray. So the first question is calculate the frequency of this radiation which produces this ray. So how do you calculate the frequency? So the first to check uh, how the, the question, when you're answering question, you have to check what are, have you been given. So we see that they have given us longer don't, and which formula do you, so you have to know this formula by heart. So which formula do we use if they are giving us longer don't to find the frequency? So you know that there's this there's this formula which says v, which is frequency, is equal to c over longer dot. Where c is the speed of light, and longer dot they have already given us, then we can easily find what our frequency. So you should always know that frequency is in second, and for you to find frequency, uh, c to be c to be three times ten to the power eight divided by your longer don't, which is 486.1 nanometer times. So you should always be changing nanometer to what? To meter when you're calculating what? Velocity. So we know that, you should always know that, I think you can see here, one nanometer is equal to what? 10 to the power negative nine meter. So which means that 486.1 nanometer is equal to what? X. So I have to change this one to 486.1 nanometer to a uh, meter. So when I change it to meters, I'll have something like this, 4.861 times 10 to the power negative seven meters. Then if I multiply, uh, if I divide uh, speed over uh, longer don't, 
the answer, the answer, the, the frequency which I found you to be 6.172 times 10 to the power 14 second negative one is, uh, per second. Since you know that the M, the M will cancel, we just remain by second, which is second divided by second, second negative one. Yeah, so when, so the, according to how the question has, has asked you and according to what you have given, what you have been given, you can calculate the frequency. So this formula, this formula is, I gave you is there in your book. If you look properly, it's there in your book. So these are the formulas which most you'll be playing with. You should know it. We can tell you find the frequency. You should always just be playing with it. I don't know if it's clear for that one. Is it clear? It's clear. Mm, so you have found your frequency. Now they ask you, combine the energy transport set ray. So uh, this energy must be in electron volts. And so the question is, uh, how much energy transport this ray. So how much of this energy transport this ray? Like for it to move, uh, what energy transport this ray for it to move from one point to another? What energy does, uh, uh, what energy uh, transport this ray? So you know that there are two formulas for energy. There's that formula for, uh, there's this formula for energy is equal to HV and there's that formula energy is equal to negative 13.6 brackets one over n two squared minus one over m squared. So I go to what you have been given. So when you see your question, you have already been given the what? The longer don't. You have seen the longer don't. And you have also already found what? Your frequency. So you already know your frequency. And here the energy change is h times v. Now you have already calculated your frequency. And now uh, your, h, your, your, your h will be always a constant which is 6.62. So if you know your H and you have already calculated the frequency, then you just go direct to find your energy. This energy, when you multiply, you see when you multiply 6.62 times 10 to the power negative 34 joules per second times 6.17 times 10 to the power 14, which you have found here, seconds negative one. So you see that seconds and seconds will cancel out, which you have 4.08454 times 10, to the power negative 19 joules. You have found your energy in joules, but there are things, this energy, when, when you use this formula for energy, you always you always find energy in joules when you use this formula. You should always put in mind that when you use this formula, your energy will always be on what? In joules. So, but they're telling us, we should find it in electron volt, and we did how to find, how to change joules to electron volt. We know that one electron volt is got 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 joules then X is equal to 4.084 times 10 to the power negative 19 joules. Then when you do your calculations, you find it is 2.5 electron volts. So you found the energy which transported to what? Right. So it is just like, the, the, the questions will be just answering themselves according to what you have been given. So you should be very careful when you answer in these questions. You should do, see what have you been given and that's how we answer these questions. Like, like, that's how we answer most of the time. That's how we answer this question. I don't know if it's clear until there. Yeah, no. Okay, thank you. So, we'll go to question number three. I tell you, niveau the energy, there's an atom at a two excité to produce a tray than the spectra the emission. So here, the key point here, so it, 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 here the question is asking us, at what level of energy was the atoms excited to produce uh, this ray uh, in, uh, 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 in a spectra of what? Emission. So the first point you should do, not here is what? Emission. And the second point you should not here is, Niveau. So niveau it means uh, the level of, from like the level of the shell or uh, yeah the level of the shell from what shell. So here the question is they want you to calculate the shell where it came from when it emitted the radiation. Where did it come from when it emitted the radiation? So we see that it is coming from up coming down to its original position. Meaning it was excited at first. It went up 
the emission is coming back to this word, the original position. Now, they want us to find where is it coming from? Or where is it coming from? Yeah, they want us to find where it is, is it coming from? Then how do you find your end? So how do you find your end? So here now, this is, this is where you're supposed to think. And remember that I'm from explaining that when an electron moves from an energy shell, when it is coming back to that, uh, if, for example, if n is equal to one, when it is coming back, it's supposed to come back to n is equal to one. And at the beginning of our question, we see that this, uh, uh, this ray was coming from the series of what? Bauma. So we know that when it was excited, it came from the series of Bauma where n is equal to two, and it went to where n, where n is equal to, we don't know. That's what we want to calculate. So when they say again involved, meaning they want to calculate where it went and where now it's, uh, now it's coming back, where it's coming back, yeah. They want you to know where it went and where it came from when it was coming back to its original position. And you, you, you know already that n is equal to what? To two. So how do you calculate it? So when calculating this is very simple. We use our formula where we know that uh, energy is equal to negative 13.6, one over m squared minus one over what? n squared. So what you do is the energy here, we say that this energy, this energy, this formula of energy is just equal to the formula of energy this side here. So when I find the energy here, if I use this formula to find the energy, meaning if I use, if, if I use this formula to find the energy, I should also find the same energy if I use what? This formula. So I know my energy already, which is 2.5 electron volts, which is 2.5 electron volts. I know my energy already. And the only thing which I don't know is where it came from after it was excited, where it went and where it where it was coming from to come to its original position, which is n is equal to two. So you see that emission here is saying what emission, when you, when you emit, what do you do? You lose energy. So when you lose energy, you just replace energy in negative. That's why you are seeing a, a negative form here. So negative 2.5 electron volt is equal to uh, negative 13.6 brackets. This is emission is coming from the higher going to the lower. So where is it ending? It's ending at two. So it will be two squared minus one over n squared. Where it's coming from, the initial one, where, uh, uh, where it's coming from when it emitted, uh, when it, it emitted uh, this radiation, where it's coming from, that's n2. So when you do your calculations, you do your calculations, you, you divide uh, by negative 36 at first everywhere. Then when you divide by negative 36, it will give you positive 0, uh, 0, uh, 0 0.187 electron volts is equal to 1 over 4 minus 1 over N2. Then this 1 over 4 will just come this other side to subtract. Then it will give you is equal to negative 1 N2. Then, uh, 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 yeah, you subtract. Then it's equal, you just remain this, this one, negative 1 over N2. Then after you subtract this one, subtract 1 over 4 it will give you negative 0 0.063, it's equal to negative one over n2. Then you do your cross multiplication, then it will give you negative 0 0.03, 0 0.063 n2 is equal to negative one. Then just divide by negative 0 0.063, divide by negative 0 0.063. Which will divide, it will give you a positive 15.87 n2. So since it is n2, you square root, you square root, which will give you n is equal to what? 3.9. And if you know that the energy levels, you can never find energy level which is in a decimal place or in a point form. So what you do, if, if you find this in a point form, you just round it off to the nearest number. So you know that from 3.4 going down, you just leave it at three. But if it is 3.5 going up, you, it will go to it will become four. So you know that your n is equal to what four. So you have seen that emission is coming from high energy level, which is supporting the theory. Coming from the high energy level where n is equal to four, then it's coming back to its original uh, place where n is equal to what to two. I don't know if it's clear that one. 
It's clear. There's, uh, there's somewhere where I'm a bit behind. There where it's mm -hmm. negative 13.6. For it to mm -hmm. go to the other side, did you did you divide everywhere? Yeah, I, div I divided. I divided everywhere. I divided this side and divided the other side. Oh, okay, that's what I wanted to find out. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, don't worry. I I I will send you these questions so that you just look. Uh, you just pass through them. Then number question number four. It was represent sous un schéma toutes les règles qui peuvent être observées sur le spectre d'émission. So here the question is represent uh, this uh, in a what in a diagram. Uh, represent all these rays in a diagram. Uh, which you can observe. Uh, well, uh, you represent these rays of spectrum of emission in a diagram. The rays of spectrum which you can observe. So, how do you represent it? So, the first, the, 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 the guiding part, the guiding point is, you always start at n is equal to one. You just draw the same, the same, the same diagram which we learned. You always start at n is equal to one. Now, where do you end? You end where you are found here is equal to four. So the your 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 last shell must be n is equal to four. Since you are starting from n is equal to one, and after you do your calculation, you found your n is equal to four. So your, your last shell must be n is equal to four. Then when you reach your last shell, n is equal to four. Then you just draw like you just start drawing the, these lines like just more the way steps are. You draw uh, from the last it comes here first. Or you just draw this diagram, yeah. And this is something which is simple. And then. It means you have represented it in a diagram form. Then that's all. If they say represent it in a diagram form, just to draw the same diagram which we learned, the same diagram. Then, yeah, then question five was, Kelly Sarah, La Ray, the blue grand longer don't obtain so se spectra, EN, the deuce, body. So he, they're asking a question. According to this diagram, which we have drawn here, your diagram, what will be the ray with it? Uh, what uh, I can say, what will be the ray which you, uh, after you do your calculations, after you do your calculations, after you do what, which ray will have the long, longer done? Is it? when you move from N4 to N3, or is it when you move to N4 to N2, or is it when you move to N4 to N1, which one has high longer done? So for this one, you can't, like, you can't just know, like, you can't just know that this one has high longer done. You do try and error. In such a way that first you, you assume it's moving from N1 to N2, then you do your calculations, you find your longer don't, then you put it aside, you will say N, N1 to N3, you find your longer don't, you put it aside, N1 to N4, you find your longer don't, you put it aside, then you compare now. You, you also, you can also do N, N4 to N3, you find your longer don't, N3 to N2, you find your longer don't, then uh, N2 to N1, you find your longer don't, then after that, that's when you want, you can compare. But mostly, what you should know that, the one which gives you the less energy, uh, let me, let me, let me share, the solutions and just share the solution. Before you go away from that, uh -huh. uh, the only thing that I know is that the, uh, about those lines is that the electrons are moving from that direction uh, in line with the arrows. So I was thinking that each arrow is representing an in an in red prone. But uh, here we are just talking about uh, one electron. But how come we have uh, more than one, one arrow? I don't know how to come about this line. Well, uh, actually, that's, uh, that's really a nice question. Yeah, actually, the movement is uh, the movement. Actually, uh, the movement is one electron, which is 
N2 to N4. That's the movement. That's the actual movement. But the question is, tenus represents Su and schema tut. Tut means all the rays which you can observe, like the rays which you can observe. So this one, N4, the N4 is just, uh, when you are calculating here, the N4 is just tenuous where should do end. But when they say what, when they say that uh, represent all the rays, when they say all the rays, you should know that you should end at N4, then you should start at N1, then you should represent what? All the rays. Yeah, but the one which you are calculating here was just this one, N2 to N4. This one is the one which you calculated here. I don't know if you are clear. Yes, I am about that. But what about the, these other other lines? These other lines. These other lines is when an electron moves from n1 to n4. These other lines, they are just they are just there. This is like this is a diagram which you mostly when they ask you, like mostly they will ask you to draw. One, you will present that ray which you have calculated, and you will present other rays also. That's how it goes. But I think those lines, they mean the possibilities, the, the movements. They are showing how the same things can move. It's either from sec a third shell, they come back to second shell. Hello, can you go? Yeah, my network goes down. I don't know if you can get me now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, network is down for Pakata, but so I was trying to connect. You can see my sharing? No. Can I see my screen? No. No. Nothing, what's happening?
Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to send into them. My network is really bad. It's really bad. So, can you see my sharing now? No. No. Nothing. I can't see. For this one, you can see. No. no. There's nothing. There's nothing. Yes. Nothing. Okay, I will die. I'm trying to share, but. Yeah. You can see now? No. No.
Hello. Yes, hello. Yeah, I think now it will go. Since I don't know, my wife is performing, so so I just had to to buy some data. So uh, where where we? Yeah, I don't know if you can see my sharing. Yeah. You can see it now. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So we are we are on which one? So I yeah, saw so someone asked a question. So someone asked a question. Um, they were the. Uh, why do we present all these uh, rays? That's where we, uh, that's where I was explaining. I think so. Yeah. So you know that uh, actually, like when we are calculating, I told you at first we are calculating for this one, for this one, for the electron here. They are, it's the one which we are calculating. But when they tell you, most of the times they will tell you if they tell you represent uh, all the rays, like which you can find, like which you can observe the rays, which you can observe. You have to you have to draw like starting from n is equal to one and to until n is equal to four. But if sometimes they specify if they want you to draw just one, they'll specify uh, like they'll, they'll they'll never put two two like there are some some instances where they specify you to draw just one. That's when you draw just this one. So in this case, they are saying draw all the rays which you can see. Apart from what you have calculated, but draw the rays which you can see or which you can observe. And uh, and if I, they ask in such a way, in such manner, they mean you to draw all the rays which you can see until to the last share which you have calculated to be n is equal to four. I don't know if it's clear there. Yeah. yeah, very clear. But yeah, but sometimes they will just tell you, no, uh, draw uh, a ray for this. Uh, uh, for this transition, if they tell you like that, that's when you draw just uh, like, uh, let me show you, let me show you. Uh, is it, is it? Yeah. That's when you just draw like, if they ask you sometimes, they can ask you, if they ask you to draw one, just when you just draw this one, then you just say n is equal to four, n is equal to two. You just represent it with a one line. So it depends according to how the question they have asked you the question. So yeah, so that one it has said two, meaning you draw all the rays which you can absorb, you can uh, observe uh, the one which you have calculated and the other ones which you can uh, 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 observe. So yeah, so that's uh, that's that. Then. For the, yeah. I have a question. Yeah, you can ask. This same diagram, it's it's known that it will always be like this. It won't change the form. Yeah, it will always be like that. It will never change the form. Maybe uh, it can like if 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 it changes the form, uh, it only changes the form like uh, when they say absorption. Absorption meaning it has only gone up. So just show the arrow which is going up from n n two going up. That's when it only changes. But most of the time, the question which comes most mostly is emission, and the diagram is always like this. Then the fifth question was. Uh, what will be the ray, the blue grand longer than obtenu su se spectra on the Duisa value? So uh, now the one which I was explaining that you have to, this one you can't just know by looking that this one has high value or this one has low value. But the one you will know the one which has high value when after calculating you should calculate N4 and N2 using the energy diagram negative 13.6. Uh, brackets one over four squared minus one over three squared 
when you find your answer, the one which you find with the least uh, energy is the one which has the highest longer dons. That's what you should always know. So that's what I want to explain. And uh, yeah, that's what I want to explain in the next uh, solution. So the next solution. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if you can see my sharing. Yes. You can see it. Not for the solutions. We are seeing the same one. You can see it. Yes, we, we can, can see, see the same one. I don't know what's happening to them. I'm sharing it. You can see like I've changed. Ah, uh, no, it's still the same one. Exactly. I think I've changed. No, it hasn't. Okay, just uh, just wait, just wait a bit. It's like today, the word doesn't want us to learn. Mm -hmm. Let me just try opening it with a, another. You can see it now? Yes, yes. You can see it? Yeah. Oui. Oui. Okay, yes, that's nice. Is. That's nice. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this this is uh, just, uh, this is according to the question, the, the fifth question, it was saying calculate, uh, calculate the ray which has the highest longer dome. And for you to calculate this ray which has the highest longer dome, you have to know there's this formula. So I, I, I wrote some uh, things which you have to note. There's this formula which is energy is equal to HC over longer dome. So you know that longer dome is equal to if, if, if I make longer don't, if I make wavelength the subject of the formula, longer don't is equal to HC over energy. And you know that HC is constant and uh, what, uh, yeah, HC is constant and energy is the one which you calculate. So why I'm saying that the one, like according to the energy levels, the one which has the least energy is the one which has the highest longer don't in such a way that if you see the, the way it is here, if I have the least energy here, meaning if this least energy I enter into, into this constant here, the longer don't definitely will be high. You are saying that? But if the energy which I've calculated is very big, which means if the energy which I've calculated is very big, it means that the longer don't actually will be very small because this is a constant. This is not changing. HC is always a constant. It's not changing. The one which is changing is energy. So we can say that the energy is the one which determines the longer don't of something. I don't know if it, that that part is clear. Yeah. So clear. Yeah. So, yeah, so the energy is the one which def, de, determines the wavelength of a ray. So how do you calculate about it? So what you should know that most of the times when you are when you are when you are when you are asked to calculate longer don't you should do always you should have this secret in your mind the one which is at last the the the, the energy the energy levels or the shells which are at last uh, i can say n3 n4 those n3 n4 when i get those two always they always give me uh energy which is in, they will give you energy which is uh in zero point uh, since since you know that the more you go up, the more you go closer to to what to zero, and you start from negative thirteen point six, negative what, negative what, negative what, negative zero point uh, six. So when you get n four and n three, it will always be giving you lesser energy. Then when you get n two and n one, most of the times it will give you the energy, a uh, higher energy. This energy, when I say high energy, lesser energy, I, I, I'm saying in terms of value, but in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, like when you put them, that's why, that's why you see it is negative. That's why I'm putting negative, negative 13.6. 13.6, you see that in terms of value, 13.6 is greater than 3.4. But since it's a negative, 
since it's a negative, we see that uh, since it's a negative, uh, negative numbers as we go up, that's where they, they are reducing. So for this one, for you to find what to find uh, to, to 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 find the energy level which has the highest what is you should get those which are closer which are going closer to zero the n3 and the n4 so most of the times you get n3 and the n4 for if they say calculate the one which has the highest longer don't so when you do your calculations you see it to be one over four squared minus one over three squared uh this is energy level four energy level three so energy level four minus energy level three So here, just like you are moving from N3 to N4, this one, if you are moving from N3, where you are ending to N4, this one has, a, like most, the ones which are my last last, if it is N5, it's N4, N5, they are the ones which gives you lesser energy and they'll give you a higher longer don't. So if you do your calculation, it will be one over four squared minus one over three squared, then is equal to negative 13.6, uh, if you square four, one over 16 minus one over nine, which will give you is equal to 0 0.660 electron volts. That will be your answer. So your answer, when you are using this formula, your answer is always in what? Electron what? Volts. So when you find your answer electron volts, you have a tax of, for you to find it in longer don't, you have first to change it to what? To juice. Your energy, you have to change it to juice. Since uh, you know that the formula for energy is equal to uh, HC over longer don't energy must always be found in juice. So you have to change it to juice from electron volts. So you know our formula, our famous formula, which we use most of the time, 1.6 times 10 to the power 19, negative 19 juice is equal to one electron volt. Then uh, X, so 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 juice is equal to one electron volt. X is equal to 0 0.66 electron volts. Then you just it will be just multiplication. This one 0 0.66 electron volt times 1.6 times 10 negative 19, which will give us 1.06 times 10 negative 9 19 joules. So you found your energy in joules. So this was the smallest energy. We have to just send it in what in joules. So after finding in joules, now use this formula. You know that energy is equal to HC over longer don't. So longer don't is equal to HC over what? energy which will be equals to 6.62 times 10 to the power negative 34 times 3 times uh, 10 to the power 8 over 1.60 1 1.06 the energy which you had here times 10 negative 19 so this is Planck's constant which is always a constant it's always given to you and this speed of light and this is they don't go to uh, the, the energy which you have found so you find that your longer don't will be 1.87 times 10 to the power negative six meters. This is in meters. So most of the times, like the longer don't, most of the time they want it to be in what? To be in nanometer. So you should always know that one nanometer is equal to 10 to the power negative 19, at 10 to the power negative nine meter. This is what? This is, uh, this is what you should always know. Then you just equate x is equal to 1.87 times 10 to the power negative six meter. Then you just divide 10 to the power negative nine, 1.87 times 10 to the power negative six. It will give you uh, 1,870 nanometer. Yeah, 1,870 nanometer. That's your longer dot. So you have seen this longer dot is very big. Uh, 1870 is very big as compared to to the longer don't which we have in our question, which is 486, if I'm not mistaken, nanometer. So this is the secret. The one which is Yad Kumalas, the last shells always gives a long, longer don't. Then the shells which are the first and second shell always gives the less longer don't. That's what you should put in mind. No need of comparing what if yeah, no need of comparing. If you just know that you'll be you'll be you won't be having any problems. I don't know if it's clear. Unfortunately, we don't have any time, enough time left. I don't know if it's clear. Hello? It's clear, it's clear. It's clear. Yeah. It's clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So number six, number six is, is just asking, Dunked domain the spectra observe, observe ton 
la red de 486.1 nanometer. So we, we learned about domains. We learned about domains. This is where the use is now. Uh, in which domain does this ray of 486.1 nanometer comes from? So I said that this one, there's no need of you calculating. You just have to do your, you try what? You try, uh, you, 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 you get, you, you, have to, you have to have the picture in mind. You have to know that from 180 nanometer to what is ultraviolet, from 400 to 800 is visible, from 800 going up is what is intra, infra, infrared. You have to know that. So we see that between 400 and 800 is what visible ray. And the, uh, one last word, one last, uh, so th that's how you go about the domain. So uh, uh, when they ask you about the domain, they simply ask you, uh, is it in ultraviolet or is it invisible or is it in infrared? So you have to know. So if you know the, the demarcation, this demarcation, you know that it is under visible. Yeah, yeah. so that's how you go about it. Then there's one more, yes? You, you are saying you have to know. So you mean this diagram is not given most of the time? Yeah, it's not given. You have to have it in your mind. So how do we know it's visible again? What? Then uh, when it, since you've when written it, it. Yeah, you can see my diagram here. Yes. Yeah, when he they gave you in, uh, in what in in micrometer, uh, micrometer, yeah, micrometer, and when you are changing to from uh, micrometer, you you should know that one nanometer is equal to one thousand. Uh, yeah, one nanometer is equal to one thousand micrometer. That's, uh, you should you should know that that difference so that since most of most of them they are given in what they are given in nanometer so you should know how to change it to nanometer and I would advise you to change it into nanometer so that you should know that 400 is here 800 is here and as you go on someone was asking a question what was the question before we go. I was asking that how did you know that it was visible? How your range? Did you get it from your answer? The answer we found. Okay, okay. Uh, so how uh, how I knew that it was visible? You can you can see my question. You can see my my screen. My screen. Yes. Yeah. How I knew is they asked me where do in which domain do I find this ray four eighty six point one nanometer in which domain. So I know that my diagram here, you have to know this diagram. That's why I was saying you should know how to change it to nano, from micrometer to nanometer. One nanometer, one, one nanometer is equal to 1,000 micrometer. So this diagram here, you have to know it by heart. You have to memorize it. You know that. So between, between 180 and 400 is ultraviolet. And between 400 and 800 is visible. And 800 going up is infrared so our our what our ray is what our ray is 46.1 nanometer so if it's 46.1 nanometer is found in between what 400 and what 800 which is what visible i don't know if it's clear oh yeah. all right well yeah so it's visible um i have a question as well mm -hmm. so do we just focus on these three domains because I know there are, there are more than that. Yeah, just focus on these three. Like when you go to university, they will, they will, they mostly focus on these three. And the most questions they come on Lyman, Bauma, that's where the question comes. Yeah, but you would find like they, they would add the, they would add fund funds the last like the, the last one which they can add if they, they increase. Yeah, but you should just know this this especially Bauma Bauma Lyman. You should know this. Okay. So, yeah, so due to time, yeah, I really wanted us to go further, like, uh, not really done, but due to time, we went here.
and yeah and i thank you for your participation it's yeah it's it's, it's really important and uh, I hope they like I really wanted you to understand uh, this topic. That's why I took more time on this topic because I observed like uh, most of the questions they mostly come on this topic. Yeah, and I haven't forgotten. I will write some. I want you to research on something. I'll I'll send the research in the group today. Yeah, and I'll also send I'll also send you some questions. So the research I will just need it. the due time is on Tuesday. I want you to research on something which I know is. Uh, since due to time, I know that we won't finish everything, but I want you to touch things which are very important, to know things which are very important so that when you go to your universities, you won't have any problems. So I'll, I'll, I'll create some questions so that you search on them and you, when you know them, it will be good. And when you go to university, you understand more. Yeah, so okay, thank you. Yeah, and have a nice day. Enjoy the rest of your lessons today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.